Hello, everybody. Greetings. Welcome to Tokyo. That right there is the Fukagawa police station here in Tokyo. One of the many police stations that they have in the city. And yesterday when I was live streaming uh, in uh, Monza Nakacho at the Mr. Donuts outside of there, I, I dropped my iPhone case, the one that I use to protect this phone when I'm not live streaming. And uh, this morning I realized it and I knew, wait, I better go and check. If, if I was in the U.S. or somewhere else, I probably wouldn't even bother. But I'm not in the U.S. I'm in Japan. I'm in Tokyo, Japan, one of the largest metropolitan cities in the entire world. And it's also one of the most honest. And I figured perhaps there's a chance I would get it back. Lo and behold, after about 25 to 30 minutes, I got my iPhone case back and inside was my card. This is the Sugoka card I've been using that has about $75 on it still. And uh, I'll tell you about the process that it takes to get your lost and found back. If you ever lose something in Tokyo, don't, don't worry too much because there's a chance that you might get it back. Uh, so here's the process I had to go through. Um, first, don't lose your stuff. Let me just tell you, it's part of your responsibility not to leave something on the train, not to drop something. It's your personal belongings. It's, it should be important to you. So don't lose your stuff. Just keep that in mind, especially when you're riding a train, you leave an iPad behind or an iPhone. It's happened to everybody though. And when it does, um, people here in Japan have a, a great deal of respect. They don't do it just because they're honest. They do it because they have a respect for other people's personal property. They also have a feeling, they also feel, um, like they put themselves in their shoes because they've also everybody's lost something uh, and everybody's had something returned to the police station which is why when I find something I will probably either just put it on the side or I'll take it to the police station like I did now if you take it to the police station there is some work involved like paperwork but you feel for the other person the third per the third reason why nobody steals uh, in Japan is because there's a good chance that somebody saw them and if they pick up the wallet and keep it there's a good chance that one of their neighbors saw them do it and that guilt will follow them to the end of time. And if they get caught, that's, that's a humiliating thing worse than in here than it would be in the West. So obviously um, people are fairly honest because you won't always get things back. So I went to the local police box to the place closest to where I thought I might have dropped it, which was Monzen Nakacho Station. There's a, a police box in there that's always busy. Sometimes these police boxes called Koban, K-O-B-A-N, they are often written in um, Roman letters so that even the you know Westerners, any, any tourist can find it pretty easy. And it's got a red light, just like you see the police has a red light right here. The Koban have a red glowing light that you can always find these police boxes. And I walked in there and I told them that I had lost an item. Instantly, the police officers looked up and they held up a wallet. And I said, no, it's not my wallet. It was a random uh, foreigner, some white dude. And obviously I didn't look like him, but they still thought it was me. It was just funny. He was like, I had to say, I had to argue with them. That's not me. That's not me. I have my wallet. That's not me. And so they, in the end, I sat down um, and he got out a report. And I told him my name. I told him my phone number. It's it help. It's helpful if you write have your name in katakana um, as well because uh, they have to write that on the report, and you have to tell them what you lost. So Google Translate, if you're not speaking English, will come in very useful to you unless you've lost your phone, and then you know it's going to be really challenging. But uh, I had I had a picture of my uh, of the phone case because my son Leo is always stealing my iPhone. So Kanai is always taking pictures of him touching my iPhone. So I was able to show this is the case that I lost. And I also have uh, an old iPhone case that looked the same, so I brought it with me. So he wrote it down, black leather folio style iPhone case. I said inside of there was a Sugoka card, which is like a Suica card. And I showed him a picture of the Sugoka card. I say it's from the Kagoshima area and he goes, okay. So he started to enter it into the computer and within three minutes he came up with a hit and it was here at this police station, a five minute bicycle ride from where I was. So he gave me a slip of paper with the file number, I guess there was a number associated with the lost item, 
Um, and uh, I was on my way. I, I rode here about uh, 10 minutes ago. It was all very quick, which just surprised me because everything in Japan takes a long time. And uh, I walked in there. The hard thing is that the, my name is not written on anything in the case, so I had to confirm a few things, but I was lucky because on that pat on that Sugoka card, they can scan it and the police can see the contents of where I was. So I had to rack my brain and, and think, what did I buy with this card? I remember I bought an iced coffee, which was in the last live stream. That was that started the live stream, that was a dollar. And I told them I took the train from last time Tsukishima to it, the police officer said, so you took it from Tsukishima to Ueno? I said, ah, Chigaimasu to Okachima. She goes, ah, Sekai. Like, Tadashi, you got it right. And she gave me my case. So she, she tried to trick me. <laughs> but it's a pretty close. That would be a hard one. But I didn't go to Ueno. I went to Okachimachi uh, recently. And she was able to see that one. I also confirmed uh, I went to Rapungi on the 29th. I did a live stream there. And she confirmed that, and then in the end, I got my case back. But yeah, a little bit of paperwork, not a lot of hassle. I wasn't surprised that it was, I'd be more surprised if it didn't turn up. The hardest part was searching my house to make sure that my son Leo didn't take it and put it somewhere, but I was pretty sure I must have dropped it. And I did. Boom! Police in Japan are the good guys here, okay? They're the good guys. They're gonna be sometimes a little bit nosy, <laughs> but they're, when I was leaving the Monza Nakacho Koban, uh, another younger police officer came up to me and he asked me, is this my wallet? And I told him, no, I, I think I've already established that as my, my wallet. This is 10 minutes later. And he goes, oh, do you have your residence card? I showed them my, my driver's license. So I, I knew it was like this, this kind of secret random check I don't, I don't mind that much. So I pulled out my residence card. He's like, okay. He didn't check the background, but I guess he just wanted to see if I, if I had it. So there's like little sneaky stuff that they might do, but you know, if you don't have anything to worry about, you don't want to act um, oddly. This is the Fukugawa Keisatsu Show, and uh, they're all very nice in there. But police are police. I do look suspicious, unshaven. <laughs> Have you ever lost anything in Tokyo? Have you ever lost anything traveling around Japan? Share your comments, share your experience down below. Because I think it's pretty interesting to hear about um, when you lose something in Japan, do you get it back? And many times you actually do. The last time I lost something of significance, and this one was like, if I didn't get it back, I'd be okay with it. But I think I was curious to see if they if I, if they did have it, and I sure enough that they did. But if you don't, if if, if I lost a um, a drone in 2017 when I was hitchhiking in Iwakuni, down in Hiroshima Prefecture, is that Yamaguchi? In Iwakuni, and uh, I just set it down and I forgot to pick it up again, and it was gone. Um, when I realized that, I went to the local police station. And I told them what I lost, and they confirmed that it was at the, at the Iwakuni main police office. Somebody had found it and returned it. And I was in tears because that was a very expensive drone, and uh, um, I didn't, there was no chance for me to buy a new one on that hitchhiking trip, and I needed it for the documentary. I was glad that I got it back. I don't think it, I would have gotten it back if it was in another country. It's just um, one of these things in Japan that, um, I don't know, you really appreciate... Um, the little things that make Japan great. I know that it's not perfect because we have the entry ban, we have lots of people waiting to come in the country. A lot of things don't make a lot of sense, but there's a lot of things that do make a lot of sense to me. The safety and the respect for personal belongings and the respect for each other, the respect for privacy, which is a, a big deal here. Um, people just, uh, you know, they're not very no, no, nosy, I guess. There's little things that you really, really like about Japan, and there's lots of things that are annoying about Japan. But when you're in a pinch in a situation like this, this is one of the things that you have a lot more success stories than you do failures. So the lost and found is pretty uh, interesting. Now, if, if if the police station doesn't have it or you can't confirm it, you, I need when you lose something, the first thing you you start thinking about is 
find ways before you go into the police station to confirm that it was yours. With meaning, if you have pictures of it, if you have receipts of something that you purchased, um, if you have um, you know any kind of proof that helps to uh, expedite getting that item back to you. Because if they can't prove it, then it becomes more complicated. But I could prove it in this case to almost beyond a doubt. Like who the heck would know that they lost a Sugoka card in Tokyo, which is very isolated to the Kagoshima region of Japan? It's like that's that should have been a giveaway. If if you if you if, there's a chance though if it's been a, more than 24 hours that the item that's lost and found is going to be sent to the main lost and found center, which is near Itabashi in uh, central Tokyo. It's more towards Ikebukuro side of the city. This place I've been to once because I lost an item about 15 years ago and, and was able to get it back, believe, of course. And it, it just took a lot longer to track it because it had been a couple of days. Um, it goes to the local police stations if you catch it in time and then after a while it moves over towards um, the main lost and found. And the respect for personal belongings is so deep. You'll find umbrellas, like $1 umbrellas in lost and found. And they keep those for a a, a set amount of time before they end up throwing the, that away. But for personal belongings, um, yeah, you know, don't give up on it is what I'm saying. They log it and track it. And if you can describe it, you can find it here. Um, even cash. Everybody knows the story. I think Tokyo returned like $84 million in cash to its rightful owner. They were able to describe where they lost it and how much. And I guess they give it back to you. And there's and there's a um, when you do lose cash, you actually um, I, I haven't had it. I haven't done that before. But I've heard that you you have to you give 10% of of it to to the person who found it as a reward. There's some sort of um, system in place for that to, to because it you know nobody has to return cash they do it because it's the right thing to do and there's a little bit of guilt that they didn't do it but at the same time um, I, I believe you, you give 10% of that to the person who found it um, when I got my drone back it came with an address and uh, I wrote that that man in a letter and I said thank you to him for finding the drone. And I sent him a gift from uh, Hokkaido uh, because I was hitchhiking. When I got to the end of it from Wakanai, I sent him a, a package. And uh, I didn't hear back from him, but yeah, I believe he got it. And I'm glad that he returned it. And I'm really thankful for that. So, so there's, my, there's my story. If you have any questions, you can leave it uh, in the comments below. And I really do... Um, Hope that if you've ever lost something, share that story with me in the uh, comments below. I think it's going to be a pretty. I feel like I'm in a, in a pretty cool, a pretty cool movie or something. Police cars going by. Share that with um, with us in the comments below. See everybody.